Hello and welcome from Berlin. I hope you can hear me above the noise of the street. The location where I'm standing at now was the location of the first and only concentration camp to be in the city limits of Berlin. This was the Columbia House. In 1933, after the National Socialists seized power, there was a wave of arrests of their opponents or people perceived to be their opponents and all sorts of what were termed wild concentration camps were set up one of them was on this site here the buildings that we have on the other side of the road are military buildings or they were Prussian military buildings and a uh, prison a military prison was uh, set up here at this location but it was closed in the 1920s apparently because of the lack of sanitary facilities indeed the, there was no sanitary facilities for the prisoners something that uh, was complained about uh, by the uh, prisoners uh, and the guards uh, in the 1934 uh, forcing toilets actually to be set up here now the uh, I think if I remember serves memory serves me correct 150 there's 156 cells and 10 holding cells I think uh, I might have got that wrong, but I shall do a longer video uh, where I correct uh, my facts on it. Now, this concentration camp being uh, built in Berlin was the uh, place where a number of characters set out on their SS careers in concentration camps, including the Koch, who was future commandant of Buchenwald and Majdanek, future commandant of Auschwitz, future commandant of Flossenburg, all started out by beating up people here. Uh, they, when people were brought in, why didn't they use the official prisons? Well, they couldn't use the official prisons because that had a legal process behind it and the legal process was not being uh, observed by the Nazis. They, uh, were f they feared that the Prussian officials in the prisons would show too much mercy. Be soft, respect the law. That wasn't what they were doing. Who was brought here? Well, obviously communists, social democrats, Jews if they didn't like them for whatever reason and then didn't like any Jews. Um, it could be journalists who'd written things about the Nazis that they didn't approve of. All sorts of people of this nature. Bear in mind that Hitler came to power not as a result of winning an election, but because of uh, machinations amongst the ruling class in Germany in January 1933. But Hitler had the wisdom to ensure that he had his man as the interior minister of Prussia, thus giving him control of the Prussian police. Prussia, by far the largest state in the German Empire, or, Germ or Germany, German Republic as it was then, sorry, um, and thus able to uh, control the police and thus able to use the police to make political arrests. So it was this climate of terror that allowed the Nazis to effectively win the 1933 March 33 elections. Win, I don't really think that's the right word because they were, as they hadn't permitted the communists to be in them, then that was not what, uh, that's not what it would normally call it, a victory. So, uh, I will do a much longer uh, video on Columbia House and uh, I like to check that I get my dates right and got things in my mind, I'm not so certain, but it, this building was knocked down around 1938, the last known photograph of it was from 1938. Columbia House uh, is a concentration camp, it came to be an official concentration camp in 1934, uh, it was closed, uh, 35 I think it was. Um, and the reason for it being closed was for the building of this. And I've got to say this, credit where credit's due, 
There are people who have complained about me not saying anything nice about the Nazis, but uh, this here, uh, this is Tempelhof Airport and a uh, very central location uh, in Berlin. And well, you know, as far as airports go, I know it's not in the centre, uh, but uh, it's uh, got a, quite a magnificent uh, structure to it. So uh, the, the building in which the Columbia House concentration camp had been housed was knocked down to make way for the airport but there you see it was part of this structure which is over here now as I've mentioned the airport I'll just tell you one or two things about it so Tempelhof this is where the air bridge when with the the blockade uh, was put in by the Soviets in 1947-48 to try to starve out uh, on freeze out West Berlin and it failed thanks to largely thanks to the United States Air Force bringing in supplies and keeping Berlin uh, alive or West Berlin alive and uh, this these buildings okay it's no longer an airport but but to actually see it it's, it's quite magnificent now under the Nazi period there were grass runways here, which uh, when the US took it over, they realized in 1946 or 47 uh, that, that it wasn't suitable for their aircraft. So they had they made hard surfaces. Uh, in, um, I think it's using metal as well as concrete. I'm not, I'm not too certain of that, but anyway, uh, there to, to allow it to take heavy aircraft. And indeed, it was used until around 92, I think. Uh, as the US, as a US base, but from around 1950, um, the uh, East Ber uh, sorry West Berlin authorities could also use it for civil transport as well. Right, so this is back onto the Columbia House down there. There, um, I'm listening oh, the, the audio book of uh, William Shira once more. Uh, Berlin Diary and in Berlin Diary he talks about somebody who was released from Columbia House and came round to see him all badly beaten up he'd spent some time in the prison and he came round to him and his wife gave him a stiff, stiff drink allowed him to get cleaned up because he didn't want his family to see him in that state uh, he was now he was a, a Jewish lawyer and uh, well, just being Jewish was enough for him to have been uh, picked up. I don't know what the fate of that gentleman or his family was. Right, so I'm in Berlin at the moment. Uh, it's now June 2023 and I've uh, got, <laughs> got videos of Berlin taken to 2008. Uh, but I um, uh, hope you found that interesting and it'll be a much longer video on the subject of Columbia House. Uh, if you subscribe, then uh, you'll know uh, when it's coming up. Anyway, I hope you can hear me okay. I hope you heard me okay. Thanks very much and all the best from me in Berlin. <laughs>